I'd like to call this workshop on zoning revision to order. Please rise and we'll pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. At this point, I'm turning the workshop over to Councilman Dean Michaels. So as, uh, as always, I've uh, distributed uh, more paper. <laughs> Lots of paper. <laughs> We're not conservation savvy here, but uh, um, so just looking to see if you have any uh, comments on the uh, revisions that were made last uh, meeting. It's blur last meeting. <laughs> they're, all, <laughs> they're all kind of blending. Yeah. Uh, Do you have anything in the packet here that? Uh, well, there's the minutes. No, I meant uh, comments from somebody relevant to what we should be talking about. Oh, there's there's. Uh, I, I didn't see one. Copies of the. Uh, yeah, 44 emails. Was the ones. And then there's the for today's I've seen, but right. I didn't see anything relevant to last times. Is what I meant. The they should be part part of uh, appendix A, B, and C. The last page. Oh, the last, last two page. pages okay. are, um, are the minutes, and then, like I said, the uh, uh, there's appendix A, B, and C that had uh, emails from the previous. I don't think we got anything on last week, the last meeting. If that's what you're asking. Yeah, we got. I think I, I think what he's asking. Oh is yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody sent in anything after the fact for last meeting. Yes, yeah, that's what I was looking. No, for. no, yeah. yeah. I knew we had stuff for what we're doing today. Right. <coughs> yeah, there was no comments. So seeing none, should we go forward? Sure. All right. So uh, 25034 was um, renamed, so it was taken out of this section. Um, one of them is uh, 25066 uh, as one of the, the renamed sections. but. Uh, uh, I think there's another one as well that uh, also because there was an update as to what the state is uh, calling boarding and rooming oh no there's boarding and rooming houses oh sorry um, I know that we changed the uh, the stables and stuff when I saw the boarding I was horses thinking of horses no <laughs> uh, boarding and rooming houses so that was stricken and it was changed to uh, Short-term rentals, I think, that was one of the uh, I think so, yeah. changes. So that that section was stripped out. So unless you have any comments, we'll go on to the next. So it's all blank. Yeah. yeah. So then the next would be uh, two fifty thirty-seven. Right. Talking about campgrounds and camps. Um, I can read uh, a couple of the uh, the comments. Uh, Marita Wells, who I do not see here, uh, made a comment on uh, camp and campgrounds. Um, as she previously submitted, uh, it appears that uh, from point G, the camp camping trailers, RVs, are up to a certain size, will not be allowed in camp campgrounds. Do we know how campers? using tents and other bungalow feel about RVs pulling up next to them. It's not clear to me why section 37 camp campgrounds and section 38 camping trailers and vehicles are separated if there are campers and vehicles are now to be mixed. Um, and. Uh, That was the only comments for that section. Yeah. I suspect 37 and 38 were kept separate because they were separate before. Right. I don't think there's any other reason for it. And as far as the uh, the tents and the trailers, I don't think we per se 
tell the campgrounds how they separate, how they uh, section off their, uh, their campgrounds so they can do as they please. We, we just monitor them for safety yeah. uh, issues. Uh, I've camped many years with travel trailers and tents and stuff, mm -hmm. and they typically have two areas. They have the trailers, which they have water hookups mm -hmm. and sewer hookups, and then they have the camp, uh, the tents and those right. little things, um, pop-up campers and stuff like that in a separate area because they don't have the hookups and um, they use a community facility for oh, They usually put them bath. close to those restrooms. Yeah, I think. yeah. yeah. So uh, I, I don't think that's a, an issue for us. Right. And that should be up to the campground, I would say. Yeah. Any other comments? We don't have a separate category for camping trailer campground. I guess that was the, was that the issue there? Mm -hmm. Dean, do you remember? So, um, as far as what she said? Well, they got no, everything no, in here. as far as the way it was there before. Uh, no well, camping trailer or RV of any size is allowed in a camp. Such vehicles are allowed only in camping trailer campgrounds. Yeah. Th there's actually an overlap between the two and a bit of confusion if you yeah. look at the numbers and everything yeah. else. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's totally redundant to having it and should be dropped. 838. I'm not sure we actually, well. I mean, there are things in 38 that need to stay, I would say. What? Well, the, the size of the camping vehicle is defined in here because that's, that's not in 37. Yes, there is. Well, this is Sorry. 38. For some reason, they're on the same page. Oh. And we put 38 they twice. Got, yeah, they just put it. Oh, oh, so, okay. My yeah, mistake. I know, I know. It confused me, too. Yeah, they're together. They're okay, together. So, so the page that is just with 38 on doesn't exist. Yeah. Yeah, when they're you made on. the copies, they copied this 38 that shouldn't be in the book. Okay, yeah. so let's... Delete. Yeah, that. forget the the old thirty eight is gone. Yeah. Forget yeah, that. Okay. It shouldn't be there. Redundant. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. what was causing me the confusion. Except that yeah. Well what okay. confuses the situation even more is that under accessory in the um, schedule of uses, their camp is considered a general use and camp camping trailer campground is considered a business use. So there are two sep there are separate things. There are separate entities. No, but we have them. It's 38. No, I understand that. I understand I'm not that. saying get rid of the, the rewritten one. That's he was just saying get rid of the duplicate get one. Get rid of the black yeah, yeah, duplicate Yeah, no, 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 I follow that. I follow that. All right, but it's just confusion. Now, in the revision, though, that was removed, camping trailer campground. Oh, did we remove it? Okay, so it's now only, there's only one now. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. that will help. Yes. Okay. All right. Never mind. Okay. Are you ready for some comments on sure. our Go stuff? Ahead. Okay. This is on the camps or campgrounds. Uh, Big E. In the middle, it says, this is about talking about amplifiers or loudspeakers, et cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, shall not be used to broadcast regular announcements, music, or other sounds not related to an emergency announcement. Uh, regular announcements should not, should be permitted. There are times, for example, say they're gonna have uh, a bingo night. I'm just picking something. They can just say, we're having a bingo. It starts at eight o'clock. Uh, all campers or whatever are requested to come, and that's it. I mean, it's informative because people are just, just don't know what it is. They may be in the swimming pool or the kids could be doing something else. So I think that should be allowed, regular announcements. Not that they're doing them every five minutes like a radio station, mm -hmm. but that, uh, you know, it gives them the ability to do it as needed. So any objection? The music and other sounds. All right, so what I'll do is I'll take regular announcement and put that yeah. um, after music. where it says uh, 
not related to, and that'll put regular announcements or related emergency management. Related yeah. campground activities or something. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's that one. Um, that's all I had on that section. Going to 38, which is down at the bottom of the page. You have a mathematical problem that's occurring here. You're putting greater than 30 feet and you're putting a uh, 256 square feet. If you take 256 square feet and divide by eight, it comes out you could be 32 feet long. That's not the, ish the main issue. Trailers do come longer than 30 feet. I think it's a width because of the slide outs no, nowadays? I know, but the, but the slide outs, if you just took what you have here, 30 feet, said that's the length, and you said 256, it says your trailer can be 32 feet long. That doesn't give you room for a slide out, because sometimes the newer trailers have slide outs on both sides. Yeah, again, this was original language, uh, so it's not but, anything that we, we changed, and we talked about this uh, in the zoning revision, and we assumed what they were calculating into it was that with slide outs, you would have 256 you don't total have square feet. Yeah. Slide outs come out of the width or the length? The width. The width. They come out in the side, and they come out on both sides, and it could be at least five, six feet long and come out like three feet each. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, th those are the ones I've seen so in the, the eight, past. The eight feet wide applies to travel. The the trailer itself but yeah. that could actually turn out to be right. 12 14 feet when right. I put those right yeah yeah so what it's saying is it's giving a, a basically a, a double restriction one is in the length and the other one is in the total square footage taking into consideration with slide outs and everything else so it's saying that you shouldn't be more than 30 feet and again this is original language so we didn't change so, it but we did have this conversation because it was brought up so if you have all these things coming out the side that right. means you have to have it shorter to allow for 200 and whatever. well no it's just saying that you can't be longer than 30 feet or total of oh. can't have more than 256 square feet so you can't put your slide outs out basically yeah because the 30 feet and 8 feet wide is 240 square feet yeah so but that allows for an extra 15 16 square, square feet but that's not when much. the slide outs are no it isn't much where is I mean, I, I don't mind changing it, but this was the original language. Yeah. But we had the conversation as to that it didn't make sense other than the fact of slide outs and not wanting to basically have, because now they have double slide outs oh, going I on know. both sides. Yeah. So you could easily oh, yeah. make a home double the, uh, the square footage of a 32 foot trailer. Yeah. My suggestion to solve that dilemma is call a trailer dealer. There's one over in Kingston. I don't know of anybody here. Um, 256 is setup mode. That would include the yeah. full yeah. extent. Yeah. I mean, the easiest thing is to take out the section if you don't care about the square footage. I know. Uh, I mean, it's and just. The length is. Well, the length is, is most of these campgrounds, I don't think, could handle more than yeah. Yeah. what it is. They're very narrow, yeah. they're very well, uh, know, restrictive as to the site that they back into. So I don't think we've ever had a problem with the length. Um, I don't recall anything coming in front of the planning board looking for an exception. Um, so it's never been a problem as far as length goes. No. Um, if you want to take out the square footage, square footage, again, it's still the sites have to accommodate all these slide outs. And, you know, the guy's got to call and find out what size site you had. Yeah, absolutely. When I had my travel trailer, I had to verify where I could put it. Fortunately, he only had a 22 foot, so I, mean, I could sneak in. We could take places. out the whole section, too, because we've limited the length. Um, right. And that's totally up to you. I don't really care one way or the other. Uh, again, this was the original language. The only thing that we changed was the name because we changed the, the heading name. So the only thing that's changed in section two is camp or campgrounds was added in. So, I mean, if you don't mind what square footage because we've I limited as far as length. Foot. It just adds more confusion. And I think the 30 feet is short nowadays with what people are using. It is. It's probably 36 or something. It's, it's not like 500 or anything. Mm -hmm. like that. I think 36 or something is a more reasonable number. So we can change that too. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's up to you. 
Well, how big are these yeah. things coming out the side? It varies on what design you have. You can have them come I mean, out on both sides, and you can have one or two on each side. So, so you could end up with 500 square feet when you add it all together. Oh yeah, that's if it, pretty big. If it doesn't fit in the site, the guy can't be. Can't yeah, go in exactly. there. 500 square feet, you might as well stand it all. Well, everybody likes this bourgeois camping anymore. Come on. <laughs> I mean, a lot no, of people nobody likes to rough it anymore. <laughs> That's the tent section. Oh, my God. All right. Everybody wants to bring their home with them. You get Wi Fi and everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. Okay. So, I mean, got it. Uh, how, many, how, how do you feel about eliminating number two first? I do. I've, That's I'm in favor of it. Everybody fine with that? Yeah. It seems to me we ought to have some kind of limit. No. No. Michael, yes? Uh, it doesn't bother me to eliminate it. Ray, yes, I say there's, yes. There's Nancy, yes. There, you know. So we'll, can we'll only delete number two. Yeah. As far as length, do we want to change that on 36. A1? 36, I think, should be a better number. If it's, you know, they, they're not going to buy a bigger trailer just because they've I got think the, the campground's going to be limited as to That's what they right, can handle limited. anyway, so. Yeah. It's self-limited. Exactly. Yeah, so. so, okay, so we'll change uh, A1 to 36. Okay, good. Any, any other uh, no, problems? That's all or? I had there. Right. So the next section was 42. Okay. Hey, Art. On, on the campground? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Carson Wyland, Clinton, uh, Hollow Road. Um, it just seems like leaving the language on loud, um, speakers if, uh, to regular announcements, it's a little vague. Um, regular half hour announcements or yeah. hourly announcements. And also, in terms of noise, it's certainly in the Hamlet. I'm thinking if I live next to the campground, you know, it wouldn't be like from 7 o'clock till 9 o'clock, 7 a.m. to 9, 9 p.m. So I want to, I think it would be worth considering. A little better definition in regular hours. Uh, okay. There would be no basis for doing it other than regular hours because that's when activities would be held. Well, you could have badminton at ten fourteen or ten fifteen or at 10, night. Ten twenty. That's or, most yeah. unlikely. Well, I think we have noise ordinances that regulate between, let's say, eight and nine o'clock at night. So you want to say between eight and nine o'clock at night? If if you if it, you point to that section, I think that would be appropriate. Well, we could just say it right here. I mean, it's, yeah, it's to yeah. simplify life. Yeah, but I still think um, regular announcements is too vague. But that's it. Uh, eight, the normal noise would be good to put there. I think. Yeah. No, hours. Well, we Anybody did, else thoughts? We did change that before. I, I would you, or we did change that wording before you came in. We did. We there. changed it to um, campground. Um, what did we say? What did you write down there? As far as what? As far as we changed the announcements. Regular announcements. The announcements. We allowed for announcements, but what Art's saying is that um, campground activities. I no? guess what he's saying is, is maybe we should limit it to like no more than once per hour and between oh, the hours wow. of 8 a.m. and 9 p.m. I you would know, just say. Well, start. if you have an emergency or something like that or yeah. whatever, I mean, that's, it's a little hard to I, regulate. I mean, well, but emergencies, emergencies are exempted. Exempt. Yeah. They're exempted. Yeah, I know. Yeah, they're exempt. But, uh, I would say. But I was going to write it so that regular announcements were now. exempted too. So now we're getting more complicated than. Well, you could reference 25028A, which is noise. And that has regulations about decibels based on the yeah. time of day and that sort of thing. But you don't want the, that level of noise to come out of amplifiers that's pretty high. It's like a lawnmower, regular gasoline lawnmower yeah. noise, a chainsaw noise. I mean, that's getting to be a lot more noise than what they would want to put out. So that's why I don't want to. What's, what's a chainsaw? 50, 50 decibels? 50 this is what, I, I don't know, 50, 75? That's what it like says that. here, 50 and 60, depending on the time of day. Yeah. They, they will get complaints from the campers if it's onerous on them. Mm. 
and they won't come back, so business won't survive. I think seven to, to nine or something is plenty good. The only reason. What if you say occasional? Rather than nah, then you don't know occasion, what occasional well, means. We don't know what regular means either, so it's not much different. So what do you have? What do you have written down there? You. I, you know, I didn't write anything specific, okay. but I put in comments as to putting in 25028A for regulation for noise. And as far as I said 8 to 9, Ray said 7 to 9. Seven to nine. It's, 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 if they have an eight o'clock activity like swimming starts or something, mm. you can't say it at eight. You got to give them a little yeah. time for the kids to eat and get right. dressed. Right. That was the only reason for the so, seven. So we're fine with putting in regular hours of seven to nine and yeah. regulated by noise um, ordinances of two fifty twenty eight a. Sure. Yeah. Okay, if you want to put that in. Something like well, it's going to be regulated anyway. Just right. telling people right. to right. to reference pay, it, yeah. right. pay attention to it. That's right. all. I just don't want to use that as the upper bound of how much noise they can make. Mm. <laughs> That's all I was looking at. Well, typically, but it is the upper bound. typically there's not no, going to be a complaint no, unless no, there's I a complaint, and then when there's a complaint, that the oh, 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 has to have <laughs> something to go off. You know, yeah. People go to the max when yeah, yeah, you yeah. tell them that's the max, and that's all I was looking at. Right. So two fifty forty two now or. The zoning officer also has the uh, prerogative to um, exempt infrequent noises. So if these are only occasional noises, he might say these are infrequent, so they're exempt from the regulations. Yeah. So there's latitude for the ZEO. They're, they're random noise, random. So I guess, again, unless the neighbor complains, we don't have a problem. But if we don't put something, then right, the ZEO right, has right. no bounds to. Yeah. Well, if I have a campground and it's a real viable campground, I may have activities yeah. Yeah. three or four times a week yeah. uh, that I want to announce. Yeah. Yeah. And I just want to make sure that we're not um, limiting that. Okay. Yeah. About 30 years ago, we had a problem with noise coming from campground. It took us a while until we figured it out. A neighbor was complaining about 5 o'clock hearing all of this okay. racket. What was the noise? Music? The racket so? was noise. And what we finally traced it yeah. back to, it was the dumpster being dumped in a garbage truck. And when they do that, the flaps go bang, mm -hmm. bang, oh, yeah. and they go yeah. ring, ring, ring to make sure it's <laughs> empty. So once we figured it out, we went to the campground owner and asked him if he could get the garbage company, whoever it was, to come 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock, whatever it was that could fit in their schedule. Problem solved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, um, I, th I thought I thought companies were already regulated, but they're already coming earlier than what I thought. So maybe that changed over time. Well, I, as I say, that we, we had the noise. We didn't worry about a meter and all of that stuff, and just went to the source of it and fixed mm -hmm. it. So I would assume we could do the same thing if here. Again, I think good neighbors would accommodate whatever complaints or came in from the neighbors so uh i don't think we'd have a problem and uh and as you said the zeo would have some latitude as to what yeah. would constitute regular basis so so we okay with this sure yeah. all right so 250 42 obviously we didn't make too many changes uh we changed uh, master plan to comprehensive only because that's <coughs> the technical term of it um the two emails that i got did not change anything or had no comments um so everything in 25042 is pretty much the original language um other than once part in b1 f which is large areas contiguous so yeah everything else was I, I have a comment on page one of it mm -hmm. uh but two-thirds three-quarters of the way down under big b one D, little d. Second line in, it says permanently preserved usable open space. What is usable? There's no definition of usable. My definition of usable can be entirely different than yours. Usable could be, I think it should be a lawn, and the other person says 
it should be a hay field, and another person could say it's supposed to be a woodlot. What is it? What do you mean by usable? Well, the word usable was the only thing that was put in, so you want to take I know it back it's, out? Well, uh, that's, you know, that just uh, begs who's going to interpret what it means. Right, but and that that, how do you want to fix it is my, my oh, question. Yeah. So you want to take out usable or? I could take it out and I'd be happy. I don't need a definition. I don't remember we talked about that. I can't remember whether we did or not when we put that in. Or when Neil put that in. Yeah, I have I no recollection as to no. why. No. You remember? No. Okay. So I don't think we're uh, married to it. So uh, if you want to take it out, I'm fine. Okay. No, no, just no, usable. Just the word. Oh, the, word usable. the blue word. Usable. Just usable. The... Hi. Hi, Cynthia. Hi. Oh, okay. I have some comments on this. Is sure, go ahead. Okay. Cynthia Cook, 31 Willow Lane. Um, there are several times the word cultural is used in this. Um, for instance, under purposes B on page 1, line 4, important natural and cultural features, wildlife mm -hmm. habitat. Could, could we add every time cultural shows up the word historic also? So it could be important natural, cultural, and historic features? George, sure. no objection. It shows up again. So where did you see it? You said right here. B14? Right here. Yeah, it's um, on page B, one. Under a big page B. One, B. Page purposes. one. Sort oh, of about a third of the way down. I was looking down. for a number four and I didn't see it. No. Yeah. About a third of the way down. So cultural it says features. Natural, I would line. just make it natural, cultural, and historic features. Yeah. Just, um, it shows up again on page five. Wait, hold it. Page two. Oh, did you find it on page two? Too? Page two, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six lines down from the top. Yep. Same thing. Natural yep. or cultural. Yeah. So let's just reading the purpose. So the provisions encourage flexibility in the design and development of land in order to promote the most appropriate use of lands to facilitate the adequate and economic, ecological or economical provisions of street utilities and preserve as permanent usable. Do you want to take out that word too? Take okay. Out. Usable. usable. Yeah. Yeah, the usable, usable appears all over the place. Open space, architectural lands, important natural and cultural features, and his. <clears throat> so I'm going to take out that and because we're going to put it over with an historic. I would yeah. just make it natural, comma, cultural, comma, and historic yeah. features. That's what I was saying. Take yeah. out the natural, put a comma. Yeah, move things. Cultural features mm -hmm. and historic. Wildlife habitat, water resources, ecological systems, and scenic areas for the benefit of preservation for future residents. Okay. Mm -hmm. That also shows up as Elliot said, and then um, yeah, also two. it may show up other places. It's on page five under F three to provide permanent protection for significant natural, yeah, historic, cultural. Or historic features identified on the site. And then I have a couple of other, I think, small comments. We were on five, was it? Yeah. That was um, F2. Third last F line. F2. F3. Third line from three. the bottom. Third from the bottom. It shows up there, too. Did you same find phrase. another place? Yeah. Hmm? No, that's the same one. Okay. And then, back on page one, there's a, a, a series of whatever standards, purposes under B1, and we come down to B1, small b, and it says compatibility with surrounding land uses and the town's traditional land use pattern in which small hamlets contrast with open space and farmlands. I, I would like us to say open space, farmlands, including farmhouses and farmsteads, 
I, you know, I'd like us, one of the things that I have noticed in our planning is we pay a lot of attention to our historic hamlets, but we have a lot of yeah. historic barns and farmhouses that are sprinkled out in the, in the, you know, outside of the hamlet. So I would just love to have some language in there. Yeah, I think we don't have a definition for it, so I think that might be problematic. Um, we don't even have for farm. Um, Farmlands. Farmlands, which is also problematic in itself. I think we're adding more problems in, in not having a definition. Okay. Um, so I guess I brought up a good thing <laughs> you can do you can and then i mean i think open space and farmlands farmlands being including in, in, encompasses all that i think and including including farm buildings including okay farmhouses, right. you know, farm, barns i'm, mm -hmm. I'm particularly uh -huh. big on barns right now so um then i was so you want me to put it like in in a caption or i mean in in, in bracket uh farmlands building parentheses yeah, farmlands, comma, including farmhouses, barns, and farm, farm buildings. And farm buildings, yeah. Because, you know, it could be a pigsty, it could be a run in building. It and could it's be actually anything. good to try to hold on to those things that are vanishing quickly if we can. Not that this is. It could be a to. silo. Then I, um, I was reading the list of. Mm -hmm. oh. Well, we took that out. Um, some of the goals, I guess, that show up under Procedure C, which is C, Procedure 2, page 2. And it, you know, it talks about the things that we're trying to accomplish with this. And, of course, so, it has... C number 2. Uh, e, Preservation of Scenic and Open Space Views, identified as important to the town. I would like to see uh, an additional one added to that, which would be protection of hamlets and other historic areas. It doesn't, we don't have anything in there that says we're going to try and look at our hamlets and historic areas and protect them from new development. It might be well, they're allowed in hamlets. Yeah, I mean, Hamlet's... It's one of those things under standards, page three, roughly three-quarters of the way down. It's allowed it's, in Hamlet's. I know, but it's not there under this listing. Well, we don't list it for anything else either. We don't do for con conservation AR5 or yeah. CR1 or... Well, we say preservations of large areas of contiguous prime or statewide agricultural soils maintenance of the use of land in active agricultural production, protection of ground and surface water, wetlands, steep slopes, floodplains, mitigation of significant environmental impacts identified through applications, preservation of scenic and open space views identified as important by the town, and um, <coughs> reduction in the amount of new roads or driveways, reduction in the amount of new road that may be required be dedicated to the town, Protection of critical environmental areas designated by the town. Accomplishment of the specific goals set forth in the town's comprehensive plan. And I would just like somewhere in that list some mention of protection of our historic resources, including our hamlets. That's You're allowed right. here, according to That's this. That's the thing. How close can it be to a hamlet? It, it may be allowed, but it's unrealistic that it would happen. But it's allowed. And, and then again, well, back to... Well, I mean, it's, I'm not saying that it's going to happen or that it's I, I feasible. Not, not, I mean, the only... It, no, it, it, the, only, the only parcel is the 20-acre parcel. He's got to come up here to talk so allowed. people can hear It him. is allowed. I, I would argue again to this point that I'm trying to introduce, which is that it's not just the hamlets, but it is also our historic agricultural areas, oh, including the ba that. barns and farmsteads. And well, we've added those. Yeah, I, I, I think added, we want to encourage, you, you know, cluster development. There. I mean, that's, that's really been the whole thing. And, and so the, the, the only area that I know that would potentially be used for this um, would be over on uh, Salt Point Turnpike. 
um, it's a 20 acre parcel, uh, which they're not doing it right now, but yeah. that would be the only property that would be of any significance. And I think we would want to preserve as much of that and land it, by and it was maybe considered even allowing it. about 15, 20 years ago of doing it, but it went belly up when the market went down. Yeah. So it never materialized. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I don't want to over restrict something that I think is a positive. I mean, you know, the, as it is, the planning board is supposed to look um, to cluster, uh, clustering whenever someone comes in with a, a project, whether it be in a hamlet or anywhere else. So I, I don't think we want to yeah. handcuff them for having that option. Mm -hmm. And all the hamlets are in a critical environmental area already. Yeah. By mm -hmm. definition, they are. That's my historic farmsteads and barns idea. No, I didn't. That's part that's of what different, I'm but I'm to just say. saying that's and what's covered already for remember, the hamlets. We lived in New Jersey for many years, and people would tear down, you know, they'd put in a new development, it might, it oh, might yeah. have been cluster, and then because the old Victorian house didn't really go with the new houses, they would just tear it down. Mm -hmm. for the, you know, get it out of there. It's an eyesore in, when, know. in fact, it could have been the most beautiful. But I mean, I would like us to make sure that we are not overlooking our rural, our rural historic architecture. Mm -mm. If it happens to be in one of the in the middle of one of these parcels, I don't think so. If I sent in some language, would, would that you could think about it? Well, we could think about it for next time, sure. Okay, and then one last thing, which is out of my area of normal expertise, but um, page five, citing guidelines F. Mm -hmm. Apparently you can build, they, they prefer to have them built within woodlands, correct? Is that, am I reading that right? Number, number two, within mm -hmm. any woodland contained in the parcel or along the far edges of the open fields to reduce the impact upon agriculture to provide summer shade and shelter for winter wind mm -hmm. and to enable new construction to be visually absorbed by the natural landscape features. When I watch stuff on nature on TV, they're always talking about the fragmentation of woodlands. And you're supposed to try and keep the woodlands contiguous to one another if you can. So I'm, it's not something I know anything about, but I, I just read this that we are here sort of preferring that construction go on in the woodland, which strikes me that maybe our CAC should look at that and see if that is, oh. is an optimal kind of. These are citing guidelines, as it says right there, for the planning board to consider. And they can call upon the CAC or anybody else to help them do this. And they've done that in the past. It was also very interesting. Uh, Again, we didn't change uh, zoning revision. We barely changed anything in this section, only th the couple of usable comments that were added in here. Um, but we had someone who was a arborist from the uh, DEC come in, and he made a, a, a big case on basically, basically cutting down certain sections to allow for new growth. Um, citing in f information that uh, you know once a, a tree peaks it stops losing some of its you know benefits as for producing you know from carbon to you know oxygen and, and so on and so forth so I mean he made a lot of case for a, against like even the the tree law um, citing some information as well um, so but we're talking about building houses yeah I understand we're but you know you're, you're creating you're, new growth forests which I happen to heard about on TV too. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just saying that uh, there, are, there are consequences to restrictions that uh, may not allow for any of those things. And, you know, as it, as it stands now, I mean, typically someone's not going to go clear a whole parcel to build one particular house. Um, but if they put in a subdivision, obviously they got to put in roads, they got to put in uh, septic systems, lawns, lawns, and, and I mean, so on. This is, these are saying as our second priority to build within the woodlands. First priority is to put it on the least fertile soil for agriculture. The second mm -hmm. priority is to put it within the woodland. 
contained in the yeah I mean, again I didn't you know we didn't write any of this language yeah. um, so I can only think that they didn't want to use farmlands as being the number one things that we should be protecting um, so forest lands would be the uh, the second uh, most and you can't build on rocks and you can't build in swamps right <laughs> I mean I I I, I know someone that uh, lived off of uh, Bullshead, and uh, DEC came in, and they wanted him to change where his driveway was, and there was already a, a driveway, and it already went through the trees, and they wanted him to move the driveway because of they said it was wetlands, but it wasn't, um, and it would have actually caused him to create more tree cutting. I'm just bringing uh, so why the DEC does certain things I, I have no I just, idea either I just thought it's kind of mm -hmm. you know the, the very second priority is to build in the woodlands and that yeah caught my eye um, okay okay oh, Mark's coming up hey, it might really be worth striking uh, Arthur Wyland again uh, in terms of um, gathering rainwater and gathering it as, as, as uh, um, groundwater, certainly the woodlands are uh, quite worth protecting for as a groundwater reservoir. So uh, just taking that out of there wouldn't point people to building in the woodlands <clears throat> as, as somebody that has to deal with mature trees around the house. Sticking me in amongst mature trees is just a uh, headache. A disaster. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I think protecting the woodlands would be an environmental plus. And therefore, striking that particular line might be take out the whole section two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So no, so you're not pointing at that part of the environment right. building. So I have no problem with incur encouraging people to do it. I mean, that's that's fine. Take it out, as far as I'm concerned. We're, this is page F2. F2. Page, page five. five. Okay. Then by doing that, you're encouraging houses to go up in space that's already open. Or farmland. Well, it's, well it, this, this saying, it's encouraging it as the second option, not to use fertile uh, farmland, but encouraging to use woodland. So by taking it out, it's just not encouraging it. It's not... It's not saying you can't do it, just says it's not encouraging. Open space, uh, sorry, no. Dean, uh, sorry. But between open space, which could be a pasture and very rolling and mm -hmm. not good farmland, and bottomland, which is rich soils, yeah. which won't and erode. It, so uh, good, good farmland is different than open space. But there's another aspect of this. I mean, we're talking about our current situation, what, what it looks like now, and it says identifiable views. We should protect identifiable views. I, I don't know if anybody's identified the views yet. No. They better no. hurry up because the trees are growing. <laughs> well, I mean, you go back 100 years, there wasn't and, and when you talk about any trees, as, as many as they are today. You go back, even when I grew up, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, oh yeah, 60, 70% of the land has grown, is in cover now that used to be open mm -hmm. uh, second or third home. growth yeah yeah so this idea that there is a traditional look to this community even though i think clustered residential would be extremely could be extremely beneficial particularly if some of it fulfilled the affordable housing issue that we mm -hmm. have to deal with and uh, potentially trying to find out from developers why they don't want to do it uh, is there some some particular things in our code that that uh, uh, impinge upon them? Well, there, there is. Uh, I mean, we're mostly five acre zoning, so I mean that's that's an impingement on uh, affordable housing. So okay. that when when there is a hamlet, you have to utilize cluster development in hamlets because that's the only place that you're going to be able to do you know low income housing or or some type of affordable housing. That's true. When you, when you one of the, you have. Five acre zoning, if 40 acres, theoretically you're saying that that's restricted to what? Eight, eight uh, houses. Eight houses. Yeah. Uh, if, if it's, it, it's actually seven because you got to take out the roads and everything mm -hmm. else. Yeah. <laughs> if it would encourage that every uh, residence would 
easily be allowed to have a, a, a um, accessory dwelling unit. And the idea that people have to own where they live if the accessory dwelling units could be rented. I mean, I'll, there are ways that you could change this cluster development, I think, so that you could get more residents in that clustered area. But, but then Elliot would complain about density. Well, right. the, there is, I, 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 I no. Well, also um, a big part of the issue is what do people want? Yeah, what do, they, do they want their children to have a place to live here in the community? They want space. Or people neighbors. People here, they want space. They don't want neighbors, but they do want space. I think the weekenders want space. Yeah, I well, think the, okay. the permanent residents that have lived here want their kids to stay close. Permanent residents who have lived here have kids who are grown and gone. Well, no, they're, they're not. They're going and gone they're because not. they can't find a, a I think affordable place I, here. What I can tell you from experience on 14 years on the planning board is that a cluster has never gotten past first base. That I can tell you. Yeah. So you ask them to look at it, they look at it. They're required they, yeah. to come in. If you want to have a, a development of mm -hmm. 30 acres or more, you're required to present right. Right, mm -hmm. uh, a cluster plan and a conventional plan. Yep. And the planning board has never in that 14, 15 years. In, in my whole life here, I've never seen one. A cluster. That's a now, long there have time. A, there have been a couple of cases where they've come up with what they call modified clusters. But as an overall plan, no. no. And happened. the way that they modified didn't suit the plan? Well, for example, I can think of one where there was, it was actually it was a fairly small, it was a big lot, but there were only four houses. Mm. And it would have been very difficult to site four houses there in a conventional subdivision because of the, the shape of the lot and the fact that there was a lot of uh, there were a lot of wetlands and so on. And so what the developer did was to basically had two conventional houses in the front and two houses in the back on smaller lots that met the qualifications for what we would call a cluster subdivision. But it was not a cluster subdivision in a legal sense because it wasn't the entire. Mm -hmm. complex it was just part of it okay but in fact the only reason he did that was because there was no other way mm -hmm. to put the houses in there so we had to do this so he wound up with actually two flag lots and yeah two basically front basically. Lines. yeah in, in a nutshell basically that's what happened yeah. Yeah. so do we want to strike um, f2 yeah I have no objection what are we striking here f2, f2? on page five two we're talking about Well, I guess the question is, would you rather keep the woodlands or the open space? No, it's, it's, this is encouraging. What, what your wife was saying is that it's encouraging people to use the woodlands as a second option. And by striking it out, it's just not encouraging it. That's all. Yeah. You still have the planning board overview. Well, I mean, and it keeps the first, fine. the first thing that encourages them to use the least fertile soil, at least. Yeah. I mean, it's not a requirement. Well, I mean, the developer's going to do what. Yeah. The planning what board's going to have their do. mission. And the planning board will either accept it or. Right. Or Take it out. So. So we in agreement? Yeah. Okay. okay. Anything else? Yes. Page one. Oh. Back to one. Come on. It's on the very bottom, F. Uh, it says preservation of large areas of contiguous land suitable for agriculture, particularly where development involves or borders active agricultural land or land with prime or important agricultural soils. I don't like it suitable for, I think what you're saying, only agriculture. And I don't think we should put that stricter requirement to contiguous areas do not have to be agricultural kind of lands, meaning pastures, hay fields, corn fields. They can be uh, rough hills, which has red cedars and sumac on it and stuff like that. It could be a uh, swampy area. It could be anything. Different animals like different kind of terrain. So, so how would you fix it? Preservation of large contiguous land. I would take uh, suitable for agriculture out.
and leave in particularly where development involves yeah. so just take out suitable for agriculture yeah any objection I don't see the point I don't see the issue I'm sorry I'm, I read it as saying it's got to be agricultural the large areas of contiguous land and I'm saying they don't have to be agricultural contiguous large pieces of land they could be forested they could be swamps whatever makes sense in the terrain that you're in they could be hills I don't know woods <clears throat> so you want to take out suitable for agriculture is that yeah what that's all so it would simply say preservation of large areas of contiguous land particularly where development and so on is yeah. that what you're saying Okay. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any objection? No. Nope. Okay. 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 Next page. Uh, <coughs> in uh, procedure number one. Uh, third last line of that, that's page two. It says the planning board may also hold a public hearing and may refer. I, I, I'm not sure how we want to envision this. Do we want the public hearing as part of this, this procedure or part of the review with the planning board and doing their normal public hearing what this what this is proposing is to do two public hearings okay one at the beginning and one okay later. i i you know that's I how i read it yeah again it's never it's, it, it hasn't come up in recent years but that's yeah how I read it's this. never come up right. but i i just was curious on right. that and then the next line down the very last line of that paragraph it's the advisory committee it's not the council that's the way they were brought into existence back about uh in the we went back 80s. and forth a couple of times and yeah, somehow well, yeah i get confused about it uh, we are a committee we there are, are other towns committee. that have councils they yeah. you know, they come in all yeah, flavors but, would be you gotta yeah. talk at the mic it's a different that's what they were incorporated the, as uh, when it came up yeah, ours zoning, is a committee. Zoning yeah. booklet okay. said it's a committee. Okay. My name's Chris yeah. uh, Giuliano, Center Road. Um, I agree with Ray on that with the committee. Um, I think unless it was to pass as a uh, council, which would be a binding, right now the uh, only thing would be the zoning board is a judicial uh, binding. Um, Quasi-judicial. Quasi-judicial. I'm sorry, Ray. Mm -hmm. right. um, as far as that goes within the town. So as of now, it's a committee. It's as an advisory right. mm -hmm. basis. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And then the bottom of that page, little e, it says preservation of scenic and open space. What is a scenic space? I don't see a definition. We went through this about 30, 20 years ago, and uh, they were trying to do vistas and scenic views and all of that with local law, and it never passed. Uh, and it, it was hard even to understand at that time because it could have been because someone thought this tree was beautiful but that you couldn't cut it but yet lightning had hit it and you couldn't cut it down because it was listed as a sacred tree I mean I don't know what scenic means scenic space well you don't know what open space is either because no. it's not listed in our definitions yeah. I mean that's very subjective is all I'm saying. So I need a definition. Do you want a definition or you want to take it out? Because I don't have a definition. Okay. I, I can take it out. Right. Except, we, except we use the phrase other, in other places, so maybe yeah. we should consider it adding a definition. So actually there is a uh, definition for open space because that was added yeah. in yeah but scenic is not scenic's not so in fact usable open space is also just say is it really? open space usable is in oh. there okay so it is oh oh it is okay there it is oh you got to go that way with it okay 
I was just looking for open space or scenic. Mm -hmm. I mean, you me. got to know how to read the I book. Know. <laughs> I know. This is like doing Scrabble. So cook again. You have a whole, we have a whole section on ridgeline, scenic, and historic preservation. I mean, we have a whole zoning section that talks about those things. So why not just refer to that? I'm just saying. You know, I mean, that can be our definition. But somehow we got to have a definition. Yeah. I'm, so I'm, if we refer to, you know, as defined under whatever number that is, I've forgotten now. I don't, you know. So, you know, if we refer to those, those lands. So what about this usable open space thing, since we do have a definition? We had talked about getting rid of usable, but maybe if yeah. since there's a definition, maybe we don't have to get rid of usable, we can keep it. Well, then i got to go and look and see what that says. Since we did yes, define sir. it. Yes, hello. Yes, okay. I, I, there's so much of this that I don't know, like the back of my hand, such as open space. Um, and there's an aspect of common usage. Language would be common. What, what something says should be common. So now you've sort of shifted from common use. I would think open space would be land that's mowed or grazed. And, but here it says land in its natural state, um, which in this area would be forest. So anybody who's like grazing or mowing is destroying open space. Well, it does also say are landscaped and improved for scenic or recreational purposes. Which I would assume is mowing. Um, I'm. I I must be oh, okay. looking at an that's older the book old. or something. Yeah, that's the old one. We changed the definition. Sorry about that, King. Page thirty-eight. <laughs> is that is is? I mean, this is the one I'm using. That's the old. That's the old one. That's the old book. But there's a new definition now. In the zoning revision, there's yeah. a new definition. Oh, in the zoning revision. Yeah. I haven't got, I didn't go to that one. I went yeah. to this. Yeah. yeah, page 38 of the, uh, yeah, it's not the is open space, space and then is open space usable. So are we going to retain the phrase usable open space based on the definition that we I have on page I've got to read it. Since we did define it. <coughs> <coughs> The only thing I would suggest is if if we use it is to change it from open space usable to usable, usable open, open space. space. Yeah. Well, we do, yeah, we can do that. Sure. <laughs> well, we've been doing that with other cases too. Mm -hmm. so, sure. Can't wait till we get to the definition. <laughs> Be careful what you wish for. Yeah, I know. So usable open space would then read an unenclosed portion of the ground of a lot which is not developed to driveways, access roads, parking spaces, which is free of structures that would interfere with the functionality of an open space and the intent use of the property, which is no less than eight feet in width at any point, which is available and accessible to all occupants of the building or buildings on said lot or on a separate dedicated lot as part of the common development scheme for purposes of active or passive outdoor use. So now, that one takes reflection to read. <laughs> it, it is a mouthful. <laughs> I'd rather wait and to see what it says after I'm done uh, to just do a judgment right now. Okay. Leave it when we do definitions. No, what we're saying. Well, is what, what, what we took it all out of 250.42. Yeah. We took usable open space out. Because you said there was no use. Yeah. <coughs> That's right. Oh, I got to go and see now. Uh, 
when you're taking out driveways and stuff, what about landscaped areas around the house? Well, it says usable, enjoyable, available access to all occupants of the building and buildings on the said lot or a separate de dedicated lot as part of a common development scheme or the purpose of active or passive oh, outdoor space. use. That's open space. Well, well, it's usable open space. Usable. We're going to change the words around and put usable in oh, front no, of it. Oh, no, I understand that. that, that was, I so, was just reading here. So it does include active space, you know, for active enjoyment. I don't see the, that wording that you just... That's the last sentence. The last part of the sentence there for all occupants. That no less than eight feet in width at any point. I don't know how you measure gardens, you know, a f family garden, vegetable garden. Guy has big pile, quarter acre. I mean, I have a quarter acre garden. Well, that wouldn't be less than eight feet then, would it? <laughs> no. No. So it should be fine. It should be okay. Oh. It's not no, less. less. Than, no, less oh, than okay. eight feet. Okay. Okay, then. So, so we should, so we should put usable back into all those spaces? Yeah. Usable, yeah. open space, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh-huh. Are we keeping scenic in, or are we defining it as under, as it is defined under our own zoning law? That would be. Well, it's it's not defined. You're saying ridge lines and and scenic, and that's not a good definition for what this word is. Supposed so we would either need a, a new definition for scenic, or but I wouldn't want to use that same definition as ridge line and scenic. Why don't we see if we can come up with a definition? Yeah. Yeah. Add. Right. Okay. Well, that's what I'm saying. I wouldn't use the same, but if you want to come up with add something. a new scenic, yeah, then no. take it into consideration. Okay, the next one should be pretty easy. That's page three. Oh. <laughs> it's uh, in three, one, two, three, four, five. Five lines up. It starts with uh, two fifty dash twenty six period. Oh, is that a period or a comma? A comma. Okay, then it should be a small L, not a big L. I couldn't tell if it was a period or a small L, a big L. If it's a period, you need a big L. If it's a comma, you need a small L. I just, it seems like it should be a think comma. Because there's no. Well, the reason it's capitalized is because it's the title of the section. That's why it's a capital L. Well, it's saying land designated as right, fresh waters. Right, it's the title of a section. Section 250-26, that's why he capitalized the L. Oh, it says land is 226, yeah. is yeah. land only? If you look at Section 250-26, it's called land designated as freshwater wetlands or underwater. Mm -hmm. It's confusing. It's not, it should really be in quotation marks, but he didn't use quotation marks. So. Oh, okay, I see that. See what he's saying? Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, that's why it's capitalized. So should yeah. we put it in uh, quotation? No. Nah. No, because then you have to do it throughout the entire yeah, thing. That's just leave it. Yeah. I would say that's just the title it. of that section. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. Exactly. I didn't get, okay. gather that. Okay, coming into D, the number Standards. two, same page, page three. First line, it says, all dwelling units within a cluster development shall be owner-occupied units. Whenever common property is approved, as part of the cluster proposal, a homeowners association, etc. My question is, for how long must the owner occupy a land in a cluster development? I mean, 20 years, 50 years, 100 years? Well, if you read this literally, it's forever. Uh, it's, well, the point is, it doesn't happen. Say, I lived there, and I decide I'm going to move out of that. Yeah, I understand. And have my daughter buy it and give me rights for tenancy until I die. What is the, I'm not the owner occupier. I understand. What is, what is the motivation for having done it that way the first time? 
Because this was just picked up from before. I, I know it is. Why I'm was it done that way before? I don't know. That's I don't what think I'm nobody at. asked. That's why I'm curious. I'm, that's what I'm yeah. asking. So you, you want to put on like all dwelling units within a cluster of elements shall be owner occupied upon a minimum of it's it's something approval or you know proposed use i mean maybe the idea behind having a owner occupied occupied is because they're in such close proximity to each other and that a feeling people was age out and yeah, you know, it's very restrictive. I mean, someone may oh, get a, a job transfer or something like no, that no, and stuck with a house. No, so. I understand. But I'm, or I'm just trying to think of what the motivation But the intent is be. that when they when they do this, that they're owner-occupied. Well, the idea would be that if you sell it and move, the new owner will live there. Well, then but if you're selling it, yeah, yeah, you would think. As but opposed to renting it. You can't rent it. That's basically, right. that's what they're saying. You, you can't, can't rent, rent it. it. But then you've got to put a deed restriction you in the deed to make that... Well, carry I would through. Imagine. Otherwise, we have no liability to carry it through because we're not going to check who owns well, all these not. properties and lives in physically. Yeah. I mean, it, again, we haven't had cluster development, I so I, I, I don't think we should restrict it because we're trying to encourage having people living you know, affordable part. housing. So I think this is a restriction that would Let's see what be counterintuitive. Richard, Richard can Morris from Hollow Road. Wouldn't it be more advantageous to have cluster development and have one of the houses rented? as opposed to not having the cluster development? I mean, that might be the way it would have to work out. I don't quite understand the stigma with renting one of the houses. I, I don't I'm either. That's why I yeah. asked. Yeah. Why, why, yeah, this is the original why? language, uh, Rich. So, I mean, we're... It should be changed. Yeah. That's what we're talking about, yeah. I mean, again, going back to, you know, the comp comprehensive plan saying that we should have affordable housing, um, plus, again, all our community development grants kind of dictating that we should encourage it. I mean, it's, it's very restrictive to but allowing it. I think if we were to allow them to not have to be owner-occupied, again, because the proximity is, is so close together in a cluster, I'm not sure you'd want these things to turn into Airbnbs with people cycling through every... Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the purpose of having an Airbnb law. It's a, but it doesn't restrict it. I don't think right now we're not allowed to have Airbnb, so Airbnb. that shouldn't be a part of our problem well, here. So when we write the Airbnb law, we can actually restrict where they can be allowed. I'm just looking at the mechanism of doing it. You got to do it as a part of the deed of the property. And then we don't do what? enforce the deed saying it's owner occupied. Oh yeah, no, I understand. But you could limit them to long-term rentals. You, they don't have to be owner-occupied. Well, you still limit them. yeah, we could. Right? But I'm saying the way it is right now, it, it's very hard to handle. Well, what you don't want is at, at different people in there every weekend. No, I'm not. But if you had a long-term rental, that would be a different mm -hmm. matter. Yeah, somebody like somebody for, goes to CIA yeah. for three well, years. Yeah, they, right. Again, the, the short-term the rental code could restrict where they could be allowed. Well, we would have to make sure to add that in when the time comes to do it. Mm -hmm. I just don't think this is the right place to do it because, yeah. again, it's restrictive of, you know, what cluster development was trying to, to do. I don't, I'm not sure I get that. Why would it be any more restrictive than putting it in the other place? You lost me on that one, Dean. Um, I, I and Shrank, Fiddlersbridge Road. Uh, I, my suggestion would be to say it's owner-occupied or occupied by tenants with a, with a lease of it with a minimum term of one year. Well, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's another way of doing it. Right. It's sort of a compromise. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. How long? <laughs> so it should be owner-occupied or a long-term long rental? Well, or a minimum of one year. Well, long-term is very ambiguous. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That could be 10 years. Yeah, to so me, if it's one year, you're eliminating the Airbnb, the people yeah, coming yeah. and going. Well, exactly. Right. So just exactly. say minimum term. Annual, annual rental. Of, of one year. Yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah, minimum of an annual rental or something. Sure, that'd be fine. Just to just to ensure that you don't have this yeah. merry-go-round of mm -hmm. people cycling in and out every two yeah. years. Would that be in in the deed then? Would you have that? No, it would be in our code. I mean, it, the planning board would pro maybe restrict it in, in the deed restriction. Yeah, it seems like. But they might require it to be in the deed restriction. I'm still trying to get things on maps so that they're there. <clears throat> well, that's yeah. good for the planning board to make yeah. sure that it gets done that way. Um, I get the impression that 
I'll, I'll, I'll back up a minute. Uh, shall I say my name again? <laughs> no, go ahead. Go ahead, Art. <laughs> Art <Wyatt. laughs> All right. Um, I know there are a lot of places where people are making small communities. I, I wish we'd look at these cluster developments as <laughs> many villages, many, ham many s small hamlets that are sprouting up in the community. They're potentially the planning board would have them in their own uh, group together where, where they become a, a mini village, a mini hamlet. I mean, neighbors are neighbors. You're not going to like all your neighbors. <laughs> and to look at cluster development as a bunch of Mac mansions that are shoved into a corner of the property to, to protect the water, to protect the wildlife, you know, to protect future agricultural uses. Uh, you, you hear somebody on the radio saying, when New York City is abandoned, they're coming up here. And the more farmland we have, I mean, Sandy closed the subways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but right now, if you look at trend, the trend is to be more urban. urban. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the kids, the kids of today are, are moving to places where they don't have to have cars, where there's easy uh, transportation and everything else. Yeah. Wi-Fi. <laughs> Some of these cluster developments, if they were located close to uh, 9G, for instance, where bus service might evolve to pick up you know, people get them. I mean, they've tried to put bus service. I rode the bus to Poughkeepsie once. When yeah, we got it. rid of that uh, about eight well, years ago. Terrible. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I wish our cluster development could be looked at both ways to, to try and preserve land, but also to try and allow for a kind of population growth that could be expected. And again, to have younger people in the community, Bill Dickett, uh, says, I'll quote him in a minute, but um, several planners that we talked to doing the comprehensive plan pointed out that population density doesn't lower your taxes. It raises your taxes. The more people you have, the more services you need, the higher your taxes are going to be. Um, the more children. Children is what well, increases your school taxes. And this is Bill Dickens' quote. Uh, cows don't go to college. Right. Cows so, you know, we... Uh, Older folks may not have to support. Well, we do support the school system to a degree, but yeah. Well, right uh, now, our, all our school systems, in population-wise, are going down. They're going down currently, but I can remember when Millbrook bumped back up when they developed Oak Cliff uh, it, it bumped up for three years, and that was their excuse to have the uh, the new high school built. But I I would disagree with that substantially. Nonetheless, um, I do I do think it would be. I know that the people who live out in the far end of Long Island can't get help out there because people can't live out there who who have to work at minimum wage or less. So I just think I said that piece. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ready for the next one? Go ahead. Uh, oh. Mm -hmm. Cynthia Cook again. <coughs> if one were to follow the idea which Arthur has just suggested, which I think is worthy of consideration. If these cluster developments were to be seen as mini villages or hamlets, then we would have to have some services there too, like a store. And, you know, the, in order to have a community sense, you really want to have commercial mixed in with residential. Some services available. Yeah, mm. so that's, that's just my yeah. thought. I think it's a good idea. Okay, same page three, number four, the second line, a pedestrian circulation and or trail system shall be designed and installed sufficient for the needs of the residents. I don't like the word shall, that's mandatory. Even if it doesn't make sense, they gotta do it. I can say may or should, but I don't want the word shall. Because if you do a cluster where the houses are all along the road like this, you know, along the side of the road and everything else is open space in the back. I thought the idea is to encourage that kind of behavior, the activity. Isn't it part of the idea of a cluster is to encourage people to walk and 
yeah meet their but, neighbors and but that kind does of thing. it always make sense to have it that's all i'm saying there could be occasions where it makes no sense, so but they got to design one even if it doesn't make sense. Uh, hi. Um, so I have some sympathy for what you're saying, but if you read the rest of the sentence, it says sufficient for the needs of the residents. Yeah. So if the needs aren't there, then there's no need to do it. If, I mean, it's only if they need it that you have to do it. If, if they're going to be hurt in some way, then you wouldn't have to have any trails. If the need is an interpretive statement, who's going to determine the need? So I'd rather just have should and then leave the rest of the sentence the same. I'm not changing it, but not make it mandatory that it be done. That's all I'm saying. How about we said installed if there is a need, such a need for, uh, from the residents? I, I just well, there's no residents at the time of construction, so you, you don't know who's going to be there. <laughs> no, I understand. Yeah. So it's just. So you say should. Should. I'm fine with should. Everybody fine, fine. with should. Okay. Hang on just a second. Oh, sure. I just noticed something at the top of page three, third line down. Oh, number G. Yeah. I think that should be roads. I think it's just a typo because above it, it says yeah. roads. New yeah, roads. That's a spelling error. I would assume it's just a typo. So, can fix that. Okay. Next page. <clears throat> okay. Um, the usables are taken out now. I we, thought we decided to keep No, I said, it. yeah, we, we oh, decided okay. on it. So yeah. I had okay. comments on those oh, here. Oh, okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> number eight at the top it says, water supply and sewage disposal facility shall be designed by a licensed engineer for any residential cluster development in accordance with such and such and such. Uh, this implies you're having a communal facility of sewer and water. Why, why does it imply that? Well, all sewage disposal systems are designed by engineers. Been I know they are. Approved by the Board of Health. So how does this imply? Um, I don't know. I, I took it as being a requirement that you sort of had to have. It. Mm -hmm. I know you have to have it designed by. Okay, maybe I misinterpreted the way. Uh, I mean like a district? Like a, yeah. yeah. He's saying that it's kind of forcing it into a a septic district. Uh, community system. Yeah, a yes. yeah, district. A separate Which the only yeah. one that we've had right. is over there off of Salt Point. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I don't read it that way. Yeah. I, I, okay, maybe it's a misreading, but I, I just was trying to be safe on that one. Okay, so I'll take that one out. And uh, in 10, let's just below it. Five lines up from the bottom, sort of in the middle. It says, established, enforceable by the town against an owner. Um, who in town would be the enforcement of this? Z ZA? Zoning administrator? I don't know. You know, we always say the town. Is it mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. the supervisor? Is it the dean? Is it council it? person? No. You can do no. it. All right. Got enough things to do. <laughs> and we'll, we'll stick the zoning administrator with yeah, it. I, I just think we should identify who. What happens if we change it in the, in, uh, in the meantime? Because now we're going to be designating someone, I mean, rather than leaving it open to the town's interpretation as to who. What do you mean? Well, if we put the z yeah. zoning enforcement officer. Yeah then it's got to be the zoning yeah. enforcement officer. Oh. If we leave it open, oh, oh. I think it's up to the town to determine who that, that function is. Yeah. And so if we change at a, at a, at a particular time, then we would actually have to change the, oh, the code I see. again. I see what you're I, saying. I see leaving it open as to the town's interpretation. Yeah, I understand. That's I, I'm just trying to put some clarity. Who, who's going to be responsible for it? So right now it's open. There is nobody. Uh, it's up to the town to determine who. Well, whose I know, is. but are we going to remember that we got to appoint somebody to be the enforcement of the section? 
Well, who's, who, who, who's responsible for all the zoning? It would well, that's a zoning enforcement officer. Well, yeah. that's so it automatically yeah. implies that a zoning enforcement I officer. Think, sure. I just think a by suggestion default. to solve it to say the zoning enforcement officer or such other person as the town council or, or shall appoint. town designee. Yeah. It, it seems overly complicated, but it's accurate, for sure. Yeah. We could say enforceable by the town or its, a, or its designee. I mean, I mean, if you want to make it simpler, I mean, I, I, I don't think we need to, but uh, how, how do you want me to write it? All right, you got a plan. Uh, I'll go or designee. <coughs> That's all I had on this section. Anybody else? We already did five. Anybody else on any of this section? Mm -hmm. not, we're done. We're done. <laughs> yeah, yes. that's right. That was 42. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're done too early? So yeah. you're telling me on the night when I tell my wife this is going to be a long one? I'm not. I'm a liar now? <laughs> <laughs> sure, you were planning something else after this. <laughs> So uh, next time would be 244, uh, 250, 44. No, 44. 45. 45. Conference centers, 49. Educational institutions. That's just a title. So 49 is a no-brainer. I think that's it. So uh, we can throw in a, a 50, fourth one. 44 is going to be all night anyway. Yeah, probably. How about 51 <laughs> would be the next one after that for farming? 51 for yeah. if, if in case we, we have available. Okay, so it'll be 44, 45, 49, and 51. Right. Those will be, the, and we'll get as far as we can. Okay. Art, did you have something? Yeah, did I miss the, going over all these definitions at some other? Yeah, we're not doing definitions till the end. So every time I'm questioning a definition, I have to go, and I don't know if something's going I, I've been circling things in the definition as we've been going along, so. But, so as we get there, hopefully I'll have all the. There's, there are a lot of, lot of changes. A lot of stuff in here. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I haven't read them. <laughs> you haven't read I've them. I've been either writing yet. notes and <laughs> definitions as well as we go through. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Arthur. All right. So it's uh, 8:25. Uh, see you uh, first uh, Thursday of uh, next month. Okay. I make a motion to close the uh, adjourn the meeting. Is a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. See you next. Thursday, in uh, first Thursday and the third Thursday.